So for today's um, activity, we're going to look at building something like this. A map on the side with a few um, stores on the left hand side. And as you can see, this is all interactive in this level. Um, for the purpose of this uh, video, we just wanted to keep it really, really simple and just focus on the layouts that there's no clicking functionality or anything like that. But it gives you a good understanding of how you can replicate a web page, um, how you can replicate this layout using Bubble. So we're going to replicate this store locator inside Bubble. All right, so how do I think about layouts like this? Uh, so there's a left side, a right side, and a header. And that's what I kind of mocked out here in Figma. Um, an area for the stores, the map, and the header. Now if I go in and show you what this is laid out as, this is how I think of the page, as in there's two rows, one row here and another row here. And inside this row of content, there'll be a right side and left side. And these are interchangeable, and I'll show you how that may work in a bit. But keep this in mind because this will be really fundamental about how we lay these things out as a group. So taking this idea and applying it to the world of bubble, but if I was going to break it down, um, let's take the layout page, for example. Here I have a simple page. It has a gray background. If I click preview, it's just a gray page. Cool. So I take a group and I slap it on the page. I'm just going to remove the style and give it a solid flat color so that we can see the difference between one side and the other side. So just for the sake of this example, I'll make it blue. And what we're going to also make sure that we do is turn on the new responsive um, layout engine. So we don't need a legacy page. And so we're just going to restructure this page. So now we have our page, and you'll see the new responsive layout engine part in here. And nothing's really interesting now, but we'll soon see that in action. So I'm just going to call this my first row. That's row. So that's there, and I'm just going to make it nice and big. And next, I'm going to put two things inside here. Um, I'm going to say line to parent and So these are vertical alignments, so I can align it to the top, bottom, whatever. Um, if it's fixed width, um, or you can make it full width. And as you can see, the minimum width here is 200, and it'll stretch out for the max width of infinity. Um, you look what that looks like. We see that. So that's kind of what we're going for. And I'm going to throw in two. Uh, other groups in here for the representing the left side and the right side. So we'll start off with the left. And the reason I'm doing this right now is just to give you an understanding of how I like to lay out pages. Remove the style. Let's give this a color just so it stands out for us. That's going to be like blue. And the other, we're going to throw in another group in here so that we can have a left and right side. So remove style, let's give that a flat color as well. And that color is going to be a darker color, just for the sake of this example. And we'll call this side the right side. So as you can see right now, this is left and this is right, both inside the row, but clearly they're not left and right. If anything, it's the opposite. 
So let's fix that. Let's have it 50-50 split. So how are we going to do that? So right now it's in a fixed container, but I want to align it to the parent. So there we go. Um, that's with the parent. Same thing here. Then this. So the key thing here is um, saying that this container is a row and we actually want it to be as big as it can vertically and the whole row thing we want that minimum height to be in percentage that's going to fill up the page and that gives you an idea of how uh, this layout is done um, the next part is you want to throw in a header. We can just put something in. Let's let's call this header, and we actually want it to be at the top of the page. So I'm going to remove that. Give that a flat color. Let's just make that a color that we have not seen before, but just for demonstration purposes. So group header is right now inside here. That's not where we want it. We want it actually at this level. Page layout uh, column. Okay, so to get the left and right to be equal size, I set the minimum minimum width of the left side to be fifty percent. Just like that and the one on the right is also 50 percent to make it stretch vertically um what i did here was then i clicked on vertical alignment to be stretch and same thing on the left and the minimum height is 100 percent just to make sure that like it stretches completely and its parent container which is the row um the minimum height there is 100 and the key thing here is if I run this now, I, of course, uh, preview, I don't see anything here. So the way we can fix that is this fix height to content on the parent. Uncheck that and if we go back to here, we should be able to see something. And we can see that there's a bunch of gray parts over here, and I think that's all right because right now we're in debug mode. And if we just take this out and go to, we can see that it stretches out completely. So this gray part here is not really part of your UI, it's just there for debugging. So this is what we kind of wanted to do. And so with this in place, you can probably understand how I set up this page so that it can be uh, the map layout. So let's go to the map layout itself. So how did I do this? Similar to our layout page, um, there's a header and there's a main area. The main area is a row layout, so across and inside that, there's two parts a list which is this uh, list of venues and then on the right hand side is the map the map itself um how you can get this cool coloring is under appearance map styles there's a whole bunch of different styles that you can choose here but uh the one for that i chose here was a custom styles and you can go to snazzy maps and snazzy maps has a bunch of snazzy styles that you can look at and let's say you wanted this blue one all you need to do is go in here and let me move my head expand this whole code up just copy everything from this square bracket all the way down to this square bracket and 
throw it inside this area here I use gardenia here and um, that's how I got the green one but you can choose whatever it is to suit your application needs just take a look at this so yep and that's what it looks like here um, how I got the venues in here all these things don't are just hard coded for the example um, I use data and I created a thing called the venue and inside the venue there's a address with it, which is a geographic address the distance which is just a number hours and the name of the store um, what's interesting here is if we look at the address so I'm just gonna bring back this store and so if I chose yeah let's choose 71 reserve road yeah if I copy that I create a new venue And click on venues. Let's say create a new venue. So I just got this one test. Um, doesn't matter. So did you see that? And this stuff got filled in automatically. So the state and the postcode, because it's set up as a geographic address. Bubble will automatically try to find out the address and fill it in for you. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. So I did that for all these addresses here. So that saved me a little bit of typing. And with that, when I linked it to my application, when I uh, found the source, I can just say the address field is the address of the, within the venue. And it just knows the longitude latitude because they're actual addresses that are saved within bubble um, so back to the layout and um, the next thing we're going to talk about is the stuff on the left hand side so the list of venues i use the repeating group to pull all the venues down from there and for the styling here i actually used yes the new responsive grid at a component level and I think this is very powerful experiment with different colors sizes text uh, so here I kind of I wanted to give um, bunnings a dark mode there's no dark mode here I took the brand colors the main color and what I did was I overlaid um, black with different opacities to see which kind of patterns would uh, emerge well and would work well to, with one another. And with that, I came up with this color palette, uh, which I defined up here. And that's just to help me kind of paste and reuse anytime I need these colors again. So right now, this one was like an opacity that's a little bit hard to use in some systems. So the way you can do that is get this dropper and go pop. And now you have a color that you can use uh, without any of the opacity stuff if you choose to do it like that so I, I use this to kind of map out the sizing of the text and the words we're not going to include all of the buttons and things like that since this is just a proof of concept uh, but this kind of gave me a good idea of colors checking for contrast um, so there's a plugin called Stark and you can click on check contrast to see if um, your text is legible uh, so using grays is always um, can be a little bit tricky so and this shows that like yep these colors work well with one another from a contrast level so I'm com comfortable with moving ahead with this design so going into here I just applied um, I just dropped in text as you can see if I open this up I have a top area which is the name and the distance part and this is using the layout where it's a row so we want things to go left to right and you can take a look at how I did this uh, in the link below I'm going to give the links to everything here but so you can 
view of the editor here and just have a look see of how I did that but using the responsive layout here um, there's another thing that I thought was really useful is inside the group within the layout you actually now have margins within um, bubble so precise ways to give padding um, outside so the way I like to think of it is margin is everything outside of your container so think of you pushing away people right that's margin they stay away so give me some space that's margin anything in between for you your personal area that's padding so anything inside a container and the spacing and pushing things over and left and right that's padding when it's inside the container so it, and that's my mental model of how i like to understand things and i'd love that that's a vis available here and we can use that and confidently within bubble and that makes layout so much easier and once I was done that, that means it can be reused as a repeating group. So we, if we go back to my, back to the listing, we know that that's just used there. All I needed to do here was just assign the data source to the view because it's just a list of views. Um, so I go to the repeating group. The repeating group is just the list of venues, and each one is an individual venue of each cell. And that's how we get this this layout. And the beauty of this, uh, I'm just gonna open this up in non debug mode, so then you can see what that really looks like. You have a nice layout that works pre um, pretty well across different breakpoints and let's say your your team says hey I, we really want the map on the left hand side just like bunnings you know like just like the original we want the map on the left hand side sure no problem so all we need to do is just click first and now you have that new layout click on this happy days now you have bunnings in light mode and bunnings in dark mode and this is a really powerful new tool from uh, Bubbles Responsive Engine, and I think it's going to make layout a ton easier. And I hope you found this video helpful, and stick around for another video. And until next time, my name is Michael, and this is Motion Product.